I spent all day down the cop shop trying to get my mate bailed out, right? I went out for a drink with my mate. I thought, we'll have a nice, quiet beer. That's all. No women involved, just a nice, quiet beer. And then suddenly some couple of boys come in, a couple of Millwall fans, and they start looking at us. And I'm saying, leave it. I leave it. Don't get involved, right? Don't have anything to do with it. But he's looking like that. And they're all kicked off. Bang, bang, bang. And in the end, I, just, I had to say, Michael, you're not a well man, right? <laughs> Don't get involved like that, but he's on the mobile. Bell Winton's come round, mob ended, and the little bird out the crankies is all kicked off. <laughs> all kicked off, and of course, it's me trying to keep the peace, trying to keep it all going. Yeah, fantastic stuff of Van in here. You know, I have them quiz nights. I have quiz nights, and you know, oh, what's his name, Gascoigne, who used to do University Challenge, right? Well, he comes round and he hosts them, he asks all the questions, right, because he has to. And he's going to, who's all started for 10? For God's sake, just ask the questions. <laughs> ooh, ooh, blah, blah, blah. And what are you saying? Everyone would bring their own crisps, right? And everyone would eat everybody else's crisps. But he goes, no, no, no. No, my hair's curly. Uh, I can own, I'm the only one allowed to eat, so he's brought his own special ones. Look, uh, look. Bamba snacks. It's <laughs> just for him. It's just for him. No one else is allowed to touch them when he goes to the right arm. Here's a very interesting thing that I found, right? This is very, very nice. Uh, if you have uh, any Chinese food, do you make some Chinese food? Do you ever make Chinese food? Sometimes I do. Uh, and I have my posh friends round, right? Uh, I put some of this, a light soy sauce on it. And I'll tell you what, that is lovely. If you're doing anything in a wok, a casserole, a roulade, anything like that, that's beautiful. <laughs> Welsh people come round, just stick a bit of that in. Uh, gravy brownie, no, don't. <laughs> No, bless him. And another thing that I like, right? You know, sometimes you wake up in the morning and you think like, oh, you feel a bit insecure. You think, oh, I don't know if everybody really likes me and I'm not sure. When you get, you put your, put your cornflakes out, right? Or your mousseli or anything like that that you put out, right? <laughs> Instead of putting milk on, right? You put this stuff on, you open up the carton and put a bit of that on. There, look. Comfort. That's lovely. <laughs> and you feel all cuddly and warm all through the day. That's lovely. That's fantastic. Oh, um, a friend of mine got married, actually. Someone I, was, uh, someone I used to knock around with uh, quite a lot uh, got married. Uh, Mr., Mr. Elton John, very nice man, got married. And uh, unfortunately, I couldn't attend the wedding. I couldn't attend the wedding, but very, very kindly, uh, Elton insisted that I have the little figures off the top of the cake. There they are, there. Uh, they sent me them. <laughs> <That's lovely. laughs> Found out another fantastic thing this microwave can do. You wouldn't believe it. Look at that. You get that, right? Pepto-Bismol. I recommend it if ever your tummy's a bit... Oof, oof, you feel a bit... Ooh, like that. So you get that, and you get a nice bar of chocolate. Right? There you go. Anything like that. Anything you can nick off a lorry driver. Open that up. <laughs> you put them in like that. Do, 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 start. Bing! And there you go. Look at that. A beautiful packet of chocolate digestive. That's, <laughs> that's fantastic, that is. That's wonderful. Oh, here's a, I keep going through my loft and I keep finding things uh, from my old films that I used to be in there. There's, uh, I think that was on the show, I don't know whether it's Rebel Without a Cause or Giant, but there's James Dean there and there's me behind him. Looking <laughs> him Absolutely lovely. That's fantastic. And there's a very interesting book that I've got. It's described as a beautiful, beautiful book of the best horse quotes. Look, horse quotations. You see? And it says there, uh, a collection of beautiful pictures and the very best horse quotes. And I'll just give you an example of a couple. Here's one, look. <laughs> that's, that's lovely. As it happens, you're very, very lucky to, uh, to find me in. Because normally this time of night, obviously, I'll be uh, out and about. Uh, my Uncle Bernie, right, he's in a bit of bother. I have to come around checking up on him. He's a sign writer, right? He done that, no cycling, fine. But he's obsessed by all things Italian because he spent like a week in Naples during the war, right, when he was gun running and stuff like that. And he thinks it's like a really flash language and he keeps making the right arse, like, look at that, look. Informatio, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's information. No, 
is uh, informatio, isn't he? Right? But he don't talk like that normally, he comes from Hackney. But informatio, but I'll come along later with a bit of chalk and I'll stick the end on and that'll be fine, he'll get away with it. He'll be all right. You have to keep an eye on him, that's all. <laughs> Here's a fantastic programme that I made, right? Uh, it was all about school. It's all about these kids at school. And I went there with me old fly-on-the-wall camera and I made the programme all about them, right? And uh, here's a little bit of it for you. For those who have missed the nine o'clock deadline, their excuses are destined for the late book. Why are you late, then, man? Can't find my glass, <laughs> Sounds like I can't find the tissue. Um, As for Max's excuse, it's all down to his bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Max. Sorry, what was your other excuse? <laughs> the head sees Ian about his excuse for being late. Ian, who incidentally starts off being very brave and very cocky, but by the end of it is a wreck. <laughs> it says your reason for being late is that you rescued a cat from a tree. If that is the case, I want to investigate that because if that happened, I want to congratulate you because I like cats. So your cat sometimes follow you, follows you and sometimes he goes up a tree but he didn't this morning. No, and the lady said I couldn't put down late. I couldn't think of anything to write and had to go to my lesson. So you lied? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. But his mate, his mate, no worries at all about coming in with the follow-up gag. If their excuse is reasonable, we don't punish them. If it's not reasonable, we punish them. So you think it's a joke? Put cat up a tree. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite of all of them is this kid coming up. He's there giving it. He never gets late. He always smiles in just on time. But we was he was on detention this week. We're asking him why he was on detention. I told Mr. Witches and suck my plums. <laughs> Mr. Wichis and suck my plums. <laughs> Have I broken some sort of code? <laughs> Fantastic little kid. Magnificent. I'll tell you what I've got else, right? This is, uh, what have you got? Oh, this is a programme. This is a dopey. It's a programme I made. I go out and I make all these sorts of programmes. Right? This is a particular bloke. This is a bloke who thought he'd come up with a good plan and I don't know, I can't help thinking that it's the worst plan in the world. Well, I've always had a, an interest in magic from being a child, I used to like watching it. But I, I didn't realise, obviously, that you could go into various shops and buy different effects. And I'm required sometimes to go and do various trips throughout the country, the Lake District, etc. And I thought, well, wouldn't it be a good idea if I took up a little bit of magic to keep passengers happy and occupied and amused by... I think it wouldn't be a good idea. <laughs> you know what I think they really want? I think they just want you to drive the bus and watch where you're going. <laughs> Not be turning around going, go on, pick a card, any card. You won various different effects on them, which proved quite satisfactory the first time I tried it. Unfortunately, the second time I tried it, I just went clean off the fourth bridge. Where the All right. <laughs> Here he is in the garage. Oh, Jim, have a rough one. Oh, sick man. <laughs> sick man. Sick of running along the top. Hey, have you seen this one? When I go in the canteen, they ask me, is there any new tricks I can do? Uh, they're obviously very interested in it. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure you don't just foist yourself upon their table and bring out your dopey trick? I mean, how interested is he, for instance? Come on. All right, let's see this fantastic feat of magic that you've got. Roadworks that's going on at the moment. Well, I thought, what a good idea to face your dollar jobs. This because you can carry them in your red bag. And say you come to a traffic jam with a big tail back over the Newport Bridge and you want to sell the other two too. Interested. <laughs> it's the same round, but to go a different way. So you have this arrow. Interested up here, look. <laughs> and you flash this arrow around like that and you say, come off on the next one. Come off. Keep coming off that way. That's <laughs> not <laughs> well, what happens if you want to come off the next one. It's all that's easy. Embarrassed. <laughs> You just turn it like that and tell them they can come off in the other direction. So I said, well, well, that's not much good. What if they can come off either way? Well, you just turn it over again and come off in either direction if they wish. But if you want, they can actually just tell them to come off in the same direction all the way. 
So he said, well, what if the road's clear? That's when you just simply turn it over like that and just jump the go straight ahead because the road's clear. <laughs> <laughs> and what about if he does another magic trick? Well, just drag him out of the bus and beat him senseless by the side of the road. That's not a magic trick, anyway. That's a bit bored with the thing on. It's much better, right, when I used to be a cabbie. All right, when I used to be a cabbie, I'd be there like, all right, governor, where do you want to go? I'd pick people up, tell them about the Hilton or places like that to big functions, and then I'd go like, excuse me, go here. You left your hat in the back of the car. Here you go. Hey, hey! <laughs> Most supermarkets tell you what to buy. Sainsbury's would like to ask you what to sell. Norwegian Jarlsberg would get my vote. I think they should sell pawpaws. What about some focaccia? Get in some old speckled hen. Simply make your choice. Vote for it in your local Sainsbury's and the top 100 products nationwide will soon appear in your store. Cake! I like cake! <laughs> More choice because it's your choice. Another fresh idea from Sainsbury's. surfaces demand different paint. That's why there's International. Specially formulated performance paints for when ordinary paints just won't do. This is what we do right at the weekends. Uh, this weekend we're having our annual Jim Carner. What we do is we get all the old ponies, right, that they've used for, for racing on the M25, and we bring them, right, and we sit the kiddies on them, and the kiddies come along, right, and they come, and they, this is what they have to jump. And the, it's a bit of a problem because sometimes they jump it and I'll go, whoosh! <laughs> you get the horses with a flat face, but that's just something you have to live with, isn't it, in an urban society? Yeah, it is. The old, uh, that goes over that bush, that's four faults, and quite possibly, the, you know, you lose the use of your legs. <laughs> this is particularly nice, this is uh, a little, uh, little pork chop. It's like, and, what, and the message with this was, uh, because just like me, you're meaty and you're beefy. Uh, and that's from Alan Ball. And, uh, <laughs> and there's a special little thing from Alan, listen, he's recorded a message in it. Absolutely lovely. Absolutely fantastic, that is. 
<laughs> now, I'll tell you what we got here. What we got? Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is another one where we're out with the police. You know, I go out with them sometimes just to basically watch their backs. Simple as that. And this is, uh, this is a program that we made. Hello, mate. Hello, mate. <laughs> Yeah, what do you do further, Alright, mate, wake up. Wake up. Well, it's morning. It's time to go to work. Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'll be sitting around the bank at nine o'clock going, well, we can't open the vault until he gets here. That's <laughs> true. Uh, come on. Do you want to get up? I'm up on three, two. Try and see yourself up here, mate. That's it. Take your time. You sure? Because I was going to rush it. <laughs> okay. That's it. Up you get. Up you get. And up. That's it. See me sit on there. That's it. Good one. There you go. Sorry. How are you? <laughs> How am I? <laughs> Why don't you hazard a guess? <laughs> Understand? Where are you trying to get to? <laughs> Back to Earth would be fine. Seriously, that would be fine with me. Now, this is my favourite. Look, look. The fact that he suddenly sees the camera and thinks, I might be a bit dishevelled. Understand? Where are you trying to get to? <laughs> <laughs> Abingdon. 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 Where did that come from? He's no idea where he is. The one thing he knows is that somewhere there exists in the universe somewhere called Abingdon. <laughs> yeah, have you got anything with your name on it, mate? No, I've got some underpants with my wee wee on it. That's <laughs> Yes, my file of facts is here somewhere. I'm sure I've got a business card. Do we know you are, because you're in a bit worse to wear for the old alcohol, aren't you? Hello? <laughs> What's your name, Nick? <laughs> Here's a question that's got him really stumped. Listen. What's your name, mate? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to help you, Carl. Sorry. In fact, he does remember his name, sorry. <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> Possibly Scandinavian of our <laughs> Nowhere. Well, that's not very nice, is it? That's not very nice, is it? No, I would have preferred Clive or Trevor, but <laughs> my parents insisted on nowhere, so I'm stuck with it. Can you stand? Can you walk? Because you want to get yourself home, don't you, really? You can't lie in the bus show all night. Thanks, is that the bus? Yeah, you got money on your chest. Can you get on the yeah. bus? What the hell is a bus? <laughs> Why are you giving me all these Latin words? <laughs> you got any money? <laughs> yeah, try and keep it going. There's the bus, it's gonna go, boys. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> That's it, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Instead of bus driver, can't just get on! Everybody else get on, let's get out of him. That's it. Keep walking, you're on. You're gonna be front of the queue. <laughs> now, just let me say something. He looks like, oh, he's been out, he's just a drink, he's just a drunk, he's a loser, he can't contribute anything to society. But in fact, uh, becomes a hugely useful member of the community, just, just at the end of this thing. It's fun, because there's always been a problem in this town. Uh, all municipal towns have their own problems. The one that they had was uh, uh, cyclists always used to complain that they didn't have anywhere to, to park their bikes. You go, lovely. <laughs> Leave it there, chain it up to his trainers, he'll be there when you go. <laughs> and the next person that they come along, on, I remember on this particular beat, was a uh, retired, he used to be a chief airline pilot. He's now been uh, reduced in circumstances, but he used to be a chief airline pilot. What exactly did he say to you? 
assessment was not change. Did he? And you just said you weren't going to give him anything? Well, I didn't, didn't have any help. He was okay. still for a cigarette. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. We've just been watching you walking along here, Chief. All right? Chief, you beg you're begging off people, aren't you? Asking people for money. No. 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 Well, I've spoken to some. No. no. Well, I've spoken. The last no. person I've spoken to, you've asked him for money. Anybody? All and of us. Some money is some our directions. All I've done is ask people for directions. Why, why would I beg? Why would I need other people's money? I have a private income. <laughs> All I want is directions. Give no, the last person you asked, you asked me if you had any change on him. No, okay. No. All right. I'm no. just going to advise you. All right. I'm not going to arrest you. You're aware you could be arrested for begging. Yeah. Okay. This is why you're denying it. All I want to do is advise you. What's your surname, mate? Mercer. Mercer. That's his name. That's M. Who's Joe Mercer? One of the big footballers. M E R C E R. That's how you spell it. Okay. Although his has got a slightly different spelling, but he's fine because he was a uh, an airline pilot. He can use the international radio language. That's it. Mike Uniform Uniform, Romeo Sierra. Mike Uniform Uniform, Romeo Sierra. Nurse. <laughs> and also the new code that they brought in for the letter B. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, the copper knows he was begging. He claims to have been asking for directions, but the copper's not stupid. He knows. He didn't need directions. Alexander Mercer. Okay, mate. Where you want you want to go up here and <laughs> take the second on the left. Okay. Second on the second left. Second on the left and down to the right, bottom. Right, lovely. Okay. Do me, yeah. All right, you take yeah. care. I think you were begging, but just go down here, second on the left. <laughs> See you later. God bless you, Arkin. Is that right where you go, man? <laughs> Your parting <laughs> shot to a policeman should never be. Well done, our kid. Have a right good joy ride. Just <laughs> listen. God bless you, our kid. It's the right way to go, man. <laughs> they don't like it. Here's another one. Here's another one that I've done, right? This is one of my favourites from, uh, ooh, a few years ago now. Because I've been in this uh, television programme making game for longer than I care to remember. Uh, and here's one that I've done. And this was about, uh, oh, this is about security guards, security firms that sprung up to guard uh, housing that estates. Making? That he was registered with the police? Nobody's registered with the police. He isn't. That his staff were trained to, to police standards? They weren't. That he was in radio contact with the police? All sorts of um, false claims on a leaflet that was meant to, to influence the public to take on his business. Ah, well, all right, all right. That's your opinion. But as far as he's concerned, dictionary-wise, he was registered with the police and he was in uh, total and immediate radio contact with the police. You tell somebody everything about what you're going to do and what you do and where you're going to do it, you are not to affect, in dictionary terms, of registering. Um, I couldn't see anything wrong with that at all. Uh, the police don't agree with that definition, Absolutely, no, no. Um, I don't know what their definition of registering is, so... Right. And you say that by putting down that you were in constant radio contact, you meant constant telecommunications Tele contact, yeah, yeah. as in British telecommunications. Yeah. As in, making a phone call. Yes. <laughs> if anything wrong, I would phone the police. <laughs> Constant radio contact. Fine. Jones's business collapsed when police attacked his claims. But the police soon had to deal with a bigger problem. A war between rival security firms over who would patrol certain estates. This man ran one of those security firms. He claims he was physically attacked by a rival company. Because of the pending court case, we can't name him. You'd feel very, very safe, though, wouldn't you? The he may have been him. attacked, but he was uh, no angel. <laughs> Rival company. You'd feel hugely safe for the thought of him patrolling your estate, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, ragamuffins or vagrants are going to get in here. Because <laughs> I just think the territory's taken. Because of the pending court case, we can't name him. He may have been attacked, but he was no angel either. You were patrolling estates in Mansfield, but you've got a criminal record yourself, haven't you? That's right. Oh, yeah, come on, bring up the criminal record. <laughs> no, he was done for uh, a driving offence. I think he, he parked on a, a zigzag by a zebra crossing or something years and years ago. Why, what do you want to drag that up for? Yeah, yeah I've got a criminal record myself, but as I look at it, it's years and years ago. And, yeah, I've only committed that once and learnt my lesson through it. And it's no through burglary or nothing like that, it was through motoring offences. You know, so what? So why, why do you need to bring it up? Just, you know, dragging my name through the dirt? 
But you've got other offences as well as the motoring offence under, under another name, haven't you? Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Why do they count? <laughs> I thought if you changed your name, that was it. They forgot about all them. Uh, but they, they, even those offences, they were only for uh, receiving stolen property and going fishing. What were those offences? There was um, receiving and angling. So those are offences of dishonesty? Yeah. And you're running a security firm offering people security and protection? Yeah, but some say that was years ago, and I, I didn't dishonest by breaking into other people's properties and pinching from other people. I was receiving stolen goods what other people had stolen. <laughs> These damn people, investigative journalists, all I ever did, I never once stole anything from anybody's house. Other people used to steal it and then give it to me. <laughs> Sorry, but I can't say anything wrong with that. I've got to shoot off right here. I've got to go, uh, I promised some old people I'd take them on a bus trip down to Brighton. They'll love this one. Uh, uh. I'll see you later. Cheers. Is he? Come on, Bob. All right, everyone. Ready to start? Bob, where have you been? You're late. Always late. Well, not always. It's the first time I've ever been late. You were late four times last week. Ah, that was under a different name. I've never been late under this <laughs> name. Before. Just exactly why are you late anyway? Well, because I couldn't get off the bus. The stupid driver wouldn't let me off until I pulled a rabbit out of a hat. The bus? <laughs> well, where'd you have to come in from, then? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs>